subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening welcome to South Asia News line I am Uzma Jafri here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday the 21st of January After 50 years India gates eternal flame merged with torch at National War Memorial Pakistan's mini budget draws massive criticism from traders and afghan women losing jobs fast as economy shrinks and rights curtailed and now for all the details after burning for 50 years the amar jawan jyoti or the eternal flame of the immortal soldier at the colonial era india gate in new delhi was merged with the torch at the national war memorial in an elaborate military ceremony on friday this comes a week ahead of the country's republic day Army veterans lauded the move but opposition parties condemned the government blaming it of altering history. After burning for 50 years the Amar Jawan Jyoti or the eternal flame of the immortal soldier at the colonial era India Gate was merged with the torch at the National War Memorial in New Delhi in an elaborate ceremony on Friday days ahead of India's Republic Day. The India Gate was built in the memory of the soldiers of the British Indian Army who died in the First World War. In 1972, the Amar Jawan Jyoti was lit there in memory of the Indian soldiers who laid down their lives in the 1971 war with Pakistan. Whereas the National War Memorial was inaugurated by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in 2019, it commemorates the sacrifice of defence personnel in different operations since 1947, the year India got independence. Several army veterans lauded the government's move calling it a true tribute to fallen heroes of post independence India. This is the same area where the National War Memorial has been built and where the names of the British Indian soldiers have been written and not the Indian soldiers post independence. So if you're talking about the Indian army in the indianized manner post independence I think that is the National War Memorial which has been built in 40 acres very recently in 2019 and there is no dispute in my mind. that that is where the honor should be given members of opposition parties however accused the government of extinguishing the amar jawan jyoti and not understanding patriotism what is happening is a national tragedy it is a travesty it is an attempt to rewrite history the amar jawan jyoti is imbued in the collective consciousness of more than a billion people Meanwhile Prime Minister Narendra Modi also announced on Friday that a grand statue of iconic freedom fighter Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose will be installed at the India Gate to mark his 125th birth anniversary. This comes as the country is also marking Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav celebrations to mark 75th year of independence from British colonial rule. German frigate Bayern arrived at Mumbai port on Friday to strengthen Indian-German naval relations. The warship was received by German ambassador to India Walter J Lindner and Maharashtra state minister Aditya Thakre. The frigate is specialized in submarine hunting and it has previously participated in a lot of missions like Atlanta, the anti-piracy deployment in the Gulf of Aden and surveillance missions to North Korea. This follows a visit by German chief of naval staff to India on Thursday who held talks with India's foreign secretary Harshvardhan Shringla. Both held talks focused on maritime security cooperation in the context of greater engagement of Germany in the Indo-Pacific region. The Indo-Pacific region is an internationally important strategic area as 60% of the global trade happens here with 50% of the world population including some nuclear powers and regional conflicts. The safety and orderly maritime route are important for the world for smooth facilitation of the maritime trade in the region. It's important that you send out messages and the message is we need free uh, maritime routes. because we are an export nation and india is an export nation so we need some stability in the supply chains and uh, you know this is very important second we wanted to mess- uh, give a message also 
that um, there is an importance of a pacific settlement of disputes. So peace in the region is important. In news from Pakistan, the passage of a mid-year budget by the Pakistan government earlier this month that ends tax exemptions has been received with sharp criticism by traders in the country. The budgetary tightening to raise revenue has already led to a sharp increase in prices of several commodities, reports suggest. Amid soaring inflation in Pakistan, the government's passage of the mid-year budget earlier this month has raised sharp criticism from the traders. The rates of medicines, prepaid cellular cards and sales tax rate on import of electric vehicles have all increased due to the mini-budget, reports suggest. The Pakistan government presented the media budget to end tax exemptions on a variety of sectors to raise $1.93 billion for the current fiscal year under IMF conditions. Opposition parties include the PMLN from the passage on January 13, the darkest day in the history of Pakistan. Traders in the country have claimed that this will cause major losses to almost all sectors. और बहुत सी चीजें कंट्रोल से बाहर हो जाएंगी जैसे अद्वियात पे अब ये बोल रहे हैं कि हम वो जो बना रहे टैक्स डाल रहे थे हम वापस ले रहे हैं लेकिन जो 370 अरब रुपए का जो पैकेज है वो पूरी आपकी हर इंडस्ट्री पे अफेक्ट करेगा जैसे अब आप देखें इंडस्ट्री की जो मशीनरी है उस पे इन्होंने 17% सेल टैक्स लगा दिया जब इंडस्ट्री किसी भी इंडस्ट्री की मशीनरी आएगी वो टैक्स उसी पे लगना है तो तमाम चीजें महंगी होंगी और बेतहाशा महंगी होंगी with inflation already at 12.3 percent, surging food and energy prices have put the Prime Minister Imran Khan under increasing pressure from the middle classes, his main base of support. The IMF had made further budgetary tightening a condition for the revival of a stall $6 billion funding program before the next tranche could be approved in a board review set for January 28. More on news from Pakistan. At least three people were killed and 20 others injured after a bomb blast ripped through a crowded market in Pakistan's Lahore city on Thursday. Separatist group Baloch Nationalist Army has claimed responsibility for the attack. After the blast, security agencies have put national capital Islamabad on high alert. A bomb blast ripped through a crowded market in Pakistan's eastern Lahore city on Thursday, killing at least three people and wounding over 20, police said. Police spokesman Arif Rana said it was a bomb, a time device rigged to a motorcycle that exploded outside a shop in the famous Anarkali market. A nine-year-old boy was among the three dead, he said. Baloch Nationalist Army, a separatist group based in southwestern Balochistan province, has claimed responsibility for the attack, local media reported. Baloch separatists have been fighting a low-key insurgency against the Pakistani government to demand a greater share in the local mineral-rich resources. They usually attack government interests or Chinese projects in Balochistan province, bordering Afghanistan and Iran. But an attack in a city like Lahore is rare. Hard-won gains in women's rights in Afghanistan over the last two decades have been quickly reversed since the hardline Islamist Taliban movement seized power in August. Reports from international rights experts and labor organizations this week painted a bleak picture for female employment and access to public space. Women are losing jobs fast as economy shrinks and rights curtailed. 29-year-old Afghan entrepreneur Sohela Nuri looks on as her dramatically reduced workforce of around 30 women sews scarves, dresses and baby clothes in a small tailoring workshop in Kabul. A few months ago, before the hardline Islamist Taliban movement seized power in August, she employed more than 80 people, mostly women, across three different textile workshops. With Afghanistan's economy deep in crisis, billions of dollars in aid and reserves have been cut off and ordinary people have little money even for basics. Enterprises like Nouri's are struggling to stay afloat. Making matters worse, the Taliban will only allow women to work subject to their interpretation of Islamic law, prompting some to leave jobs out of fear of punishment by a group that severely restricted their freedom 
the last time it ruled. In the United States, the Emirates of Islam is more than a woman. We want that a woman has a greater role in making sure that she is able to get a job, that she is able to get a job, that she is able to get a job. Afghan women's employment levels fell by an estimated 16 percent in the third quarter of 2021, according to a report released by the International Labour Organization (ILO) for Afghanistan on Wednesday, relative to 6 percent for men. Though the economic crisis is hitting the entire country, some agencies predict it will leave almost the entire population in poverty in the coming months. The effect is disproportionately felt by women. News from Nepal. Nepal's active caseload skyrocketed from less than 5,000 to more than 50,000 within the first 20 days of 2022. Coronavirus infections have surged due to the spread of the Omicron variant and has severely affected frontline workers as well as leading medical staff as third wave of COVID-19 sets in the Himalayan nation. As the third wave of COVID-19 cases is raging across Nepal, the capital city of Kathmandu is witnessing long queues of frontline workers standing in line to get tested for COVID-19. In less than a week, the Omicron variant has forced more than 500 doctors and health workers at various hospitals in capital Kathmandu alone to isolate, cutting them off from the duties. Already bearing the crunch of shortage of health workers at various departments inside the capital, government has reduced the isolation time period to five days. Many of them are being treated at home isolation and the hospital. I think this third wave uh, is going to bring uh, human uh, resources cry a lot because a lot of healthcare workers are getting infected day by day. If you look into the data, you know, uh, bigger hospitals of Nepal like Bir Hospital, uh, Teaching Hospital, more than hundreds of uh, healthcare workers are getting infected. So uh, once they have to go for isolations, we don't, we will not be having uh, adequate amount of healthcare workers to take care of the patients. Some regional and district hospitals outside Kathmandu Valley have been hit hard with the surging case of infection amongst healthcare workers. Many districts have been reported to hold some of its services as it doesn't have adequate staff to look after the patients after the majority of the staff tested positive for the contagion. Similarly, the Bharatpur Hospital in Chitwan district, considered as one of the prime locations hosting large numbers of doctors and medical students, also has been quarantining the majority of its staff. Despite reeling through two deadly waves, Nepal still remains unprepared for the third wave. Nepal currently has 50,328 active cases and a positivity rate standing around 45%. Keeping in mind the current situation, the Nepali government earlier this week has started booster doses owing to the risk that lies ahead. The Ministry of Health and Population also has decided to administer a third dose to all people above 60 years, inoculated six months ago, as well as to those with compromised immunity from January 28. Despite the availability of advanced kitchen tools, people in a village in Anantanag district of India's Jammu and Kashmir still prefer using traditional stove known as daan or dambur. Locals say that food cooked on this stove tastes better than the modern ones. Despite possessing advanced technology kitchen tools, locals in Dardpura village in Anantanag district of India's Jammu and Kashmir have continued to use the traditional stove which is locally known as dan or dambur. Although many household items have been replaced by modern advanced technology, equipments, gas stoves and electric heaters, this traditional stove continues to warm the house of locals. They say food cooked in earthen pots on this stove tastes far better than the modern ones and it is also inexpensive. <laughs> موسم <laughs> میں इसलिए बहुत दूर से लकड़ियां मिलानी पड़ती हैं
Locals also use kangri, the traditional Kashmiri wicker basket that holds an earthen pot containing embers. It serves as an inexpensive portable heater amid winters. Jammu and Kashmir is currently witnessing temperatures below freezing point and it is under the grip of a 40-day long harshest period of winter, which began from December 21. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.